So the thing about um, being on camera more is now I actually am forced to look at my face more, um, which didn't bother me so much because I covered it with a lot of facial hair before, but I just recently shaved off uh, my beard. And now I realize I have grown several chins underneath. Look at it. Look at that. Good Lord. Where did that come from? Um, underneath all that hair. So, um, yeah, it's a bit, you know, of a wake-up call. Um, hit the gym, Jay. So, I'm on my way to Woodstock, Ontario today uh, to go to the Woodstock Nostalgia Show. I have uh, been going to this show for ages. My parents used to take me there back when I was a wee lad. Um, and because uh, they were collectors, I don't know if I mentioned that before, they primarily did uh, tobacco cards and paper ephemera and advertising and things like that, which is also what I collect. It's, it's in the blood. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the most consistent shows uh, in Ontario. Um, it has changed hands several times. Um, it does seem to happen more often now, which, as I've mentioned before, um, can sort of uh, lower the quality sometimes uh, because the dealers just don't get enough time between shows to be able to gather stuff. I know I've been a dealer before at various shows, uh, especially record shows, and um, you start to see the same stuff at the, the same shows over and over again. Uh, but this one is always a good one. This is the uh, spring show version of it. And uh, I'm hoping to pick up uh, some stuff here. I have found some tremendous pieces over the years here. And uh, yeah, hoping that happens today. Uh, I will point out for those that are keeping score, I have yet to touch my face in this video. So, count it at zero. Come <laughs> on. 
the superpowers one? Carrying the microphone. Oh, that's nice. So that's usually else? missing. They're really, that's usually missing. Well, that's what the one guy told me too. The yeah. guy that collects them. He says, Whoa, it's there. It's always the smallest part. <laughs> Okay, so back at the shop, and um, yeah, I did manage to get some stuff at the Woodstock Nostalgia Show. It uh, doesn't disappoint, um, even you know when it's not a great show, I still come up with uh, decent stuff. And this time, I got some really fun stuff. Um, sadly, it uh, the show was tempered with some um, sad news for me and and my family in particular because. Uh, I learned of the passing of a of a, a dealer who had been a longtime friend of my parents and had known me since I was knee high, um, Lionel Aubrey. Um, for those of you who don't know, Lionel was an absolute gentleman. Um, in in and especially sometimes within the dealer community, that's a tough thing to come by. Uh, my family and I have been very lucky in that most of the dealers we've ever got to know have all been uh, exceptional and, and dealt with integrity. And Lionel was a shining example of that. Um, uh, another dealer who's on par with Lionel by, by far, uh, and um, my parents have met him around the same time, Ed Locke, um, who I'm sure I've mentioned many times, uh, told me of his passing. Um, and I hadn't seen uh, Lionel in any shows for a while. I know his health had been uh, a bit on the decline. And um, yeah, he passed last year. So that uh, is, is, is a really sad thing. My parents moved out to Ottawa um, in the 1980s. Uh, he was one of the first dealers that they ever met. And he always uh, would put things aside for them, um, gave his great advice over the years on where to find stuff and where to go, especially into places like Quebec, which we'd never been before. Um, and he was just a wonderful man. He always treated me really well. I tell you what, how you know whether a dealer is good or not is how they treat the children of the collectors around. And in almost every case, um, the guys who end up being the really ended up being the really good ones that my parents dealt with for a long time were super patient with me because I was a show brat. And I'd be running around and picking up stuff and looking at stuff while my parents were trying to do deals. And they were, as I said, all the dealers um, that my parents dealt with a long time were really great. But Lionel was a good one. And very, very sad news. Um, I don't know if any of his family watches these. I, I really doubt it. But uh, my condolences to you. And um, 
yeah, that's that's about that. Um, but moving on, I did manage to find some good stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go over it. In fact, uh, I picked up which were literally like some of the first cars that I collected as a kid in packs. Um, I did start in the 70s. Uh, and, uh, Star Wars were the first ones I ever bought, but then my first hockey, these were some of the first hockey sets I ever collected. Um, so, yeah, out of the pack. So we'll, we'll get into it right now. Um, here we, oh, that already fell out. Uh, nice to pack prepared for eight bucks. It's a Duke one, a little bit rough. I usually sell these for around, you know, 15 US. Um, I think we knocked it down in price. I can't remember what. This is really great. Um, in the 1980s, when the Dukes of Hazard show, I think 84, was really hot, um, Shreddy's put out these 3D comics with their thing, uh, within the serial, and, um, this is always missing, which is the 3D glasses. I don't know if I actually have a set. Uh, if I don't, this will go up on eBay, um, but if I do, uh, sorry, if I do, this will go up on eBay. If I don't, this will stay with the collection, because I have several of these, um, uh, things and right now 1980s serial inserts are going crazy prices uh i picked this up because it is um it's it's like a little tiki thing but it's from beverly hills probably 1960s um and it's like a mini menu um and it was only three bucks so again i know i, I people some pass on paper but paper is so easy easy to ship um, and, um, it is a wide variety of people who are interested in it. You know, people who collect Beverly Hills stuff would be interested in it. People who collect, um, Tiki stuff would be into it. Um, and people who are into just restaurant wear, because there are people who just collect stuff from restaurants. Um, they would buy that in a second. And, and this is another case. Here's, um, one from a, that's a, looks like a letter cover from, uh, Kenmore Hall in, in New York City. Um, that came with it. I don't know why. Uh, the 46th Street Theater. This came, these all came as a group. Um, and, uh, but this was the reason I bought the whole group of them. And I think it was one of these on here it said 15 bucks, but I got a discount in the end. Um, menus I've always had really good luck with. And this one is from 1943. Um, and yeah, I just love them. And people love looking at the old prices, things like, um, where some breaded veal cutlet with spaghetti and tomato sauce. That is 80 cents. 80 cents. Spaghetti and meatballs. 35 cents. I mean, they're just so fun to look at. Um, but they're also highly collectible. And lots of people do collect things. And, and usually from the bigger cities, too. Um, this one's from New York, from 7th Avenue. I'm not familiar with it. But some of these can go in the hundreds. Um, you have to do your research. But, you know, I was picking this up fairly cheap, so I didn't really care. Just trust my gut. Um, what else did I pick up? This, because it's interesting, it is from the 1933 uh, Chicago Exposition. And Expo stuff was, always has demand. It was 10 bucks, but again, I bought a stack of stuff off this gentleman, and he always gives me a fairly good discount. So I'm probably, out of all of these things here, um, not in to maybe a few bucks a piece type thing. Um, uh, this was from another one. I just collect uh, Olympic stuff here and there, and the Calgary Olympics uh, here in Canada was a, a big big thing for me as a teenager and um so i just grabbed that here's an advertising piece it is from where are we going here sunbeam bread and fold it out and it's a little oops it's big uh headdress um you know cowboys and indian stuff still does sell and that's exactly what this one is here it's the um can't see who says that. Makers, I think something American Copper to make. Probably 1950s. Um, and it was six bucks. So, again, any advertising pieces, especially bread, cereal, all that stuff, pick them up when they're cheap. And by cheap, I mean under 10 bucks. Um, little bubblegum thing from Leaf. Uh, I think this was like a dollar. Um, 
or two, um, they would have stuck this on the gumball machines. Um, so this is an unused one decal. Somebody who collects gumball machines might want that. Somebody who collects bubble gum uh, might want that. And that one's 1959 on there. Uh, this is sort of local interest. It is Royal Ontario Museum. Um, it's a little booklet from them. Uh, the museum has changed a lot uh, over the years. This, um, I think previous to this, it was the Toronto Museum, I think. Um, but yeah, it's got, um, it's probably 1950s again. Uh, and I'm going to put that, throw that up on eBay. This, I just like the black pack graphic. I don't know. I might use it for something else, but I just grabbed it. Two bucks. How to Fly a Piper Club. Like this one is 1949. It's a great little booklet. And depending on condition, which this one isn't in the best of condition, but I kind of like that because it shows it actually probably sat in the thing. There's incredible graphics on there. Um, and usually people started when they started flying more often than not, it was a Piper cub, uh, cub that they started on or a, a plane of similar kind of thing. So a lot of people have uh, nostalgia about this plane, um, falling apart a little bit there, but still all together. Um, probably, you know, I, I don't think I paid five bucks and I'll probably get 25 to 30 for it, even in that condition. Um, so this was weird. This is, um, it's a knockoff toy from, um, the, it's a knockoff of, uh, the Masters of the Universe series. Um, I've sold a couple of them. There were like, oh, what were the names of them? Like Sun Gold was one of the companies that did it. Uh, Galaxy Warriors, I think. And I can't remember the other names, but my apologies on that. Um, but this is the shield for their Tiger Man. And, uh, I sold the Tiger Man before, um, and got a fair amount of money. The knockoffs often can bring more money than the actual, uh, ones that they were sort of trying to look like. Um, and this was just in a junk box uh, where I flipped through it and the lady said, anything in there, a dollar a piece. So I grabbed this um, and it's in really nice shape. The graphics are in good. The stickers stuck down fairly well. Um, I don't know what it would go for, but I imagine I can get 40 bucks for it. That's just a gut feeling on it um, because the accessories are where are the hardest thing to find for a lot of these. Unfortunately, I only had one Tiger Man, um, but, uh, and I think he went to, I wanna say Japan, but I'm not 100% sure on that. A uh, bunch of dog tags. Dog tags are kind of hit or miss for me, uh, but these were cheap enough. Um, it was 10 bucks for uh, the mall. These ones are um, 1940s and they have the date on there. These ones are metal. These are, I believe, leather or maybe cardboard. Um, and I think some of them have the dog names on them. Super cute, but I love these ones. These are London, that's 1950s London, Ontario. But these metal ones, there's 46 in the various different shapes. They sell um, upwards of 10 bucks a piece. Sometimes more, depending on how elaborate it is and how old it is. So I think, you know, from 41, being on there, I think I'm we'll making some money on that. Not a huge amount. Uh, bought these off of Ed Locke. Thank you, Ed. I don't know if you watch. Um, probably not, but, um, Ed always has fantastic paper. Um, and, uh, he has, a, you know, storage units that he pulls stuff out of. And these are great. These are diamond dyes, uh, paper dolls from the turn of the 19th century, like 1890s, 1900s. Um, they were made to stand up. Some of them are missing the easel. Some have it on there. Uh, these will probably end up going into my mom's. Uh, she still collects paper dolls and things like that. Um, ones to watch out for, though, are the ones that have sports on them. This clearly is tennis or badminton. I'm thinking badminton because that looks like a sort of feathers from a shuttlecock on there. Once you cross over into that, these can fetch upwards. I've sold some paper dolls with sports stuff over $100 before on eBay. Um, the other ones, you know, uh, Ed gave me a deal. These are sitting there all at... Um, 15 and 10 a piece and uh, I think in the end he knocked uh 10 or 15 dollars off um the overall maybe more not 100 percent but uh, thank you again Ed um but when you can pick them up uh generally the average ones seem to sell on eBay around 25 to 40 dollars depending on how complete and the condition that you have these are nice because most of them have their dresses with them little pinwheels and things like that um so yeah that and then i picked this up 
um, it is a songbook for uh, John Labatt. And the nice thing about it is, is that it says published for the employees of John Labatt. So it was probably only given out to employees. It is a collection of uh, songs <laughs> dealing with alcohol. <laughs> so um, where is the, oh, not all, I guess not all alcohol. Because there's some things in there like God Save the King. Oh, Canada's in there. Um, but there's a really great song on the back, Glorious Beer. Um, I'll let you read it yourself. But it, Beer, Glorious Beer. <laughs> That's a great song. Um, I, if anybody out there knows this, because I have looked and I haven't been able to pin it down to an exact date, that they stopped using the, uh, the Red Arrow um on their advertising because then i'd be able to pin this down to a specific date because it doesn't have it i suspect this is 1940s um and uh but i just thought it was really cool plus it's something that was apparently only given out to um employees of john labatt and at the time um i think their thing probably was uh london so uh, probably not a lot of these out there. This one is in, except, is in exceptional sh shape. Anybody who collects uh, beer will love this one be just because of the, the bottle on it there. And I think it was five bucks. So, um, And then picked up this. I love old wrappers for anything. Gum cards, um, candy bars, all that stuff. I love them. So this is kind of a cool one. It's from Petroliana or Petrola. I can't read that. Ontario anyways um, and it's an ice cream bar um, these things I know most people don't think this stuff has value but it does because people threw these away um, and they have a graphic history and somebody who's into ice cream would collect stuff like this and again it's Petrolia there you go Ontario um, and somebody who's from that town uh, their family might have worked at the um, Lambda ice cream uh, co and would want it, you know, a little piece of history on there. It was a dollar. Don't, you know, you don't hesitate on stuff that's a dollar. It's just, you know, don't don't waste your time. Just grab it. Um, and then this, uh, there was a box of random cards. Now, the gentleman had a mint, and I'm talking mint, set of the um, 66 Batman Black Bat cards. Um, but he wanted a thousand bucks for it which is way beyond what I'm willing to. But I went through this little box he had on there, and he just said three bucks a piece. If you buy a ton, we'll drop it down. Well, I didn't come up with a ton. But I did get some good things on here. Um, the thing that is, is these are old holders, and they are very scratched up and yellowy. The cards inside are beautiful. That's the, the reason why. I went through, and I did cherry pick it, you know, and he gave me them for three bucks a piece. Um, this is the first card in the Crack Jack Sports Series, which is a hard series to track down. Um, and the, as you all know, um, who collect cards, the first card and the last card are almost always dinged up. Um, because they usually, kids would wrap elastic bands around them. Um, they, elastic bands would stick to the cards if they were left on there or just bend the corners and things like this. These are rounded corners, so it's not a you know, big deal with that. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, a nice pickup. Uh, here's another one that is, um, it was a shredded wheat co it's Kings and Queens from the fifties. Um, Parkhurst, um, yeah, these are the Parker sports cards, which I just sold a bunch of those. Um, some fairly good conditioned OPG, um, uh, Batman cards, the second series, I think, is the Blue Bats, and then the television show, which I don't think I've finished my television show set, so I'm going to have to check that out, but just some of the imagery on these, there's a Red Bat one, just great, like, those are incredible, and they're virtually, they are the same as the Tops ones, um, they're just the Canadian one, actually harder to find than Tops, just because in Canada, with less population, they didn't print as many, um, and so they are harder to find than they're uh, tops counterparts so 
A um, couple of black bats in there, again, that are in fairly nice shape. The centering is nice on that. The OPG um, was notorious for centering issues and condition controls because, again, they were in the business of selling gum, not cards. The cards were there, but their business was gum, and I think a lot of people forget that about early cards. So quality control just wasn't even an issue. I mean, if, they, if something was off-centered, miscut, um, funny color, they just packaged it off and sent it off, and that, that was it. Um, and then that's a 30s card. It's a bit beat up. Um, I, I think I thought about putting, I should have put that one back and I didn't bother. Um, look and see Paul Revere, Columbus, and then last but not least, uh, this is, these are really hard to find. These are from a Saratoga products, which made, uh, potato chips in the uh during the war period and this is they had several i think three or four different sets but this is a collection of um uh fighter jets and uh, not jets um airplanes like fighter planes from world war ii and ships as well um and um really hard set to find and this one sadly is uh, cut off center but um you know for a collector generally people who collect um these card sets condition isn't always I mean, it's better to have better cards, but somebody who wants a filler, that's going to work out perfectly. Um, I did manage to pick up a record. Most of the records now at these shows are overpriced, which is sad because before they, that was where I used to pick a lot of great records up. Because antique dealers and generalist dealers is what you see mostly in the nostalgia shows didn't care about records. They'd come with estates and they were just wanting to move them out as quickly as they could. And now they know that, you know, you can look them up on Discogs and um, the price is there. This one was in amongst a bunch of classic rock from a guy who clearly doesn't deal in records. Um, probably wasn't able to find this and just stuck 20 bucks on it. Sold it to me for, I believe, 15. Uh, bass Nectar is like a dubstep um, electronic music. Uh, I knew about uh, Bass Nectar being valuable because I lucked out years ago and got um, a 1990s pressing of one of their earliest, uh, the DJ's earliest um, release and sold it for a ridiculous sum of money. Now these don't go anywhere near this, this 2014 release, but it has a Discogs medium of about 60 bucks, so kind of easy. Now I'm going to have to stop the video here because um, I can't do this with one hand. Um, and so what I'm going to do is uh, stop it and just stitch these together once I've got these open and show you. So we'll end this and just like that, magic, we are back. Um, so yeah, you can see this. I think this is the, I should have looked at the back. I think it's 77, 78. Oh, that wasn't the smartest thing to do there, Jay. There you go. Um, let me see. Yeah, 77, 78. Um... And this is like my era, favorite era. Oh, sorry about that. It's terrible camera work. Um, but these are a pain in the butt. They really are. There we go. Okay. Um, my favorite era of hockey. Um, probably this was the first set that I collected out of the packs as a kid. Uh, my parents would give me, um, I think they were 15 cents. Uh, and you'd go over and buy a couple of packs and just collect away. Um so great sense of nostalgia just looking at these um no huge cards in here there is uh oh there he is mike palmatier it's a palmatier rookie um on there i don't think there's any other heavy hitter rookies there is bobby orr when they sent him to the blackhawks i'll never forget the bruins for that and there's cool things like the stanley cup Canadians that was right when they're in the middle of the dynasty and a lot of the teams are on there too which is kind of a cool thing some leaders and things like that on there um it's in rougher shape you know I mean this this spent some time up um somewhere in a wall there's a chunk missing out of the corner with the uh, checklists on it um, but just a cool piece you can buy um sort of like massive top loaders that uh, you can slide these in and i've seen guys who just collect um uncut sheets i don't know the value i'm not gonna lie i pay 80 bucks for the three of them i think um i, I don't think you know 100 bucks might be a stretch but more than likely i might uh i have to do some research and see uh what these go for uh, but you know taking into account condition and stuff like that but uh yeah i couldn't leave them behind for that price i mean it's like what 
26 27 dollars per sheet that's to me is a screaming deal so i was very happy with that uh, i'm not going to show you the back of this one but i will bring up the next one okay and so this is the uh 78 79 series i'll try to show you it this way You go through it. The highlight of this set is, I'll show you in a second. Um, there's Bobby Orr's. That's his last card. Um, this is the last card that uh, Opeachy did for him. Um, got the checklist on there. I see who else is on here. I don't see any like Brian Glenny. Uh, There's Boudreaux. Boudreaux. There is Dave Tiger Williams. And these are kind of cool. These were the all-star cards. And on the back of them, I think there is a picture that you put together. And it was of Ken Dryden, I think. But you got Salming and Gee. God, these guys all passed away. Ken's still around. Daryl Sittler, my favorite player of all time. Uh, Dennis Pop fan shut these guys were like they were my heroes like they were that's what it was for me and it was a great era of hockey too um, sort of Canadians Islanders um, the Leafs weren't really in it <laughs> and you know haven't been for a long time but yeah great again another great set not going to bother showing you the back um, and, uh, but I will show you the last one that I got um, Okay, so this is the last uh, one of those sheets that I got. And as you can see, um, it is the uh, card set from Superman the movie. Um, usually these would be, it's not a full set, obviously, um, because usually you would have these for most of the sets uh, on three separate uh, sheets. Um, and But there's some really great, uh, great stuff on here. I don't know if the number one card's on here or not. Um, I guess I should show you this way, and you can see all the way across here. It's in rougher shape again, lots of creases, you'll need time to flatten out, some edge tears, but such a great piece. I mean, if you were a fan of the movie and, and at the time, who wasn't? Everybody loved this movie. At least, I don't know, I was a kid and I thought uh, it was the bee's knees. Um, and I collected these in the packs from the packs again. I've got my set, my original set still kicking around. Um, great piece of nostalgia. I'll show you the other side in a second because the other side is just as impressive as the front. Um, so we'll do that now. And that is the other side. And as you can see, with most of the non-sport cards in the 70s uh, and the 80s too, uh, you had... Um, uh, basically, you could build a, a poster um, on the uh, using the backs of the cards. And I had friends who would do that, would take the cards and stick them on a piece of cardboard and then put them up on the wall like posters. Um, I wasn't allowed to do that because my parents were card collectors and that was, you know, considered savage. Um, and so uh, I never really did that. Uh, but I used to put them together and, and look at them when I had them complete and stuff like that. There's one on the back of the Star Wars um, ones as well. Um, and this is, I think, 1978. Um, so, you know, right around the same time as the Star Wars cards were coming out. Um, so I would be collecting these as well. But great poster. This is one of my favorite. Look at that. Flying across Metropolis. And... This is the Opeachy card set. I tend to find uncut sheets at Woodstock every so often, largely because the Opeachy plant was in London, Ontario, which is the next, uh, it's about 40 minutes away from Woodstock, I, I believe. Um, so a lot of, I'm assuming, um, employees of uh, Opeachy would probably sneak some of these out or wouldn't have to sneak them out. I'm sure it wasn't a big deal. Um, and give them their kids to put up on their walls or something special like that. Um, so again, I do get sheets from time to time there. Um, I'm going to have to order some of the big top loaders, which will probably be more expensive than the actual <laughs> sheets themselves. Um, and yeah, these are great. These make great wall displays. Uh, and I've, I've always loved the uh, uncut sheets. Um, and it's cool to have a set that I grew up with.
um, which I really dig. Um, so basically that was it. Um, I am going to sort of apologize for the, uh, the footage that I take inside the show. People ask me, you know, uh, why I don't get a GoPro. I don't know how to edit properly yet. I just use the I thing movie on my phone. I don't even know how to take like the, the, files that I make here and export them. I don't know how that works. Um, so, uh, I generally am trying to film with one hand and look with the other. And most of the time I just stop. And because once I get to a show, I am, let's go get stuff. And I'm not thinking about filming that much. So often what happens is I run in, I do my quick round, which I always do, uh, looking for the stuff that stands out right away, grabbing that, and then I'll usually do a second round, and at that point, then I will be doing some filming. Um, so it's often why you don't see me buying actual stuff. Um, is That's the reason for it. In the future, you never know, I might learn enough for it. Um, I know people have told me that you can, you know, basically rent editors online. You send them all the files, and then they edit the video together. That costs money. <laughs> and uh, I don't make any money at YouTube. Um, I'm not you know, it, it, it's not the reason why I got into this. Um, I do apologize. I know the videos are a bit rough at times, but, uh, I probably won't improve. I'm 53 and, um, that whole can't teach old dogs new tricks. Pretty much true with me. So this is probably about the best quality you'll get. I might, uh, apparently someone told me you can get chest harnesses or phones, I might try that um, at garage sales this summer, and then that way my hands are free and I can look and you get all that fun footage. But uh, yeah, there you go. So um, after saying all that, um, you know, maybe you want to subscribe. Probably not after hearing all that, but uh, I would appreciate it if you do. But you don't have to. As I've said before, I'm not the boss of you. So um, yeah, I hope you guys are able to get out to some shows or garage sales and find some cool stuff. Uh, in your area. Bye.